Welcome back again. Today we will be going over hashing crypto 101. What I will be doing here the key terms. So you can read through the concepts and for me I'm going to answer the questions if there is something that needs to be exemplify uh, exp uh, something something that needs explaining I'm going to also explain that while answering the questions. So the first question is, read the words and understand the meanings. Is basics for encryption or encoding? Of course, if you are familiar with uh, encoding uh, mechanisms, you will know that basic for is not an encryption, it is an encoding. Now, what is a hash function? So we have here for this task, we have three questions. The first one, what is the output size in bytes of the MD5 hash function? So we know the MD5 hash function. We, know, we want to know what is the output, how length, or how length is the resultant output after we hash the string or we hash the password. What is the length in, in bytes? So to find the answers, you would have to use some Google, Googling. You can use, uh, you can just type MD5 output size in bytes is also good. So for Microsoft, we have the first snippet here. The hash size for the MD5 algorithm is 128 bits. So 128 bits equals to 16 bytes. So that is the answer for the first question. So when you hash a string or a password using MD5, the resultant hash or the output will have a length of 16 bytes or 128 bits. Can you avoid hash collisions? Of course not. For any hashing algorithm, there are mechanisms or ways to engineer hash collision. A hash collision is when you have two, uh, like let's say, uh, two passwords, okay, and you produce the same hash. So this concept is explained here. As you can see, uh, a hash collision is is when two different inputs give the same output. So you have two passwords and when you use the hashing algorithm, say MD5, uh, it might produce the same output. When it produces the same output for the same input, okay, we call it hash collision. Hash collision algorithms mostly are MD5 and SHA1. If you have a and if you have an 8-bit hash output how many possible hashes are there so this has to do with the possibilities uh, a hashing algorithm could generate or the possible hashes the hashing algorithm could generate so basically we have here if you have an 8-bit hash output how many possible hashes are there so say that you did some hashing for a string and the hash output length was 8-bit so how we can conclude how many hashing or how many hashes are possible to generate out of this algorithm. So the answer is 256, but how we know the answer? So basically, uh, what you can do, the answer for this, let me have a note. Let's open mousepad or key right. So the formula is, Let's make, oh, let's zoom in first, zoom. So two to the power, looking for the power symbol, two to the power eight equal two, five, six. Okay, so basically the output is eight bit, right? So to know how many possible hashes the algorithm could generate, the formula is 2 to the power 8. 2 to the power 8 equals 256. 256 hashes possible to be generated. Uses for hashing. Okay, so crack the hash using the rainbow table manually. A rainbow table is like this. This is called rainbow table. A rainbow table is a table of hashes and the corresponding plain text values. So when we say crack a hash using rainbow tables, it means that a computer will need to go through all of the hashes and compare them 
with the possible plain text password. If your hash matches one of these hashes, it will give you the corresponding plain text password. So crack the hash using rainbow table manually. You don't have to do it manually. You can just grab the hash and crack it online. So we go to, okay, this site, hashes.com. Put the hash and submit and search. You see the hash has been found and the corresponding late plain text password is basketball. By the way, online uh, websites, the online way is, um, or depends on rainbow tables. So you submit the hash and it will go through the huge list of hashes. If it finds the submitted hash, it will give you the corresponding plain text password. As you can see, without the need to crack it using the website, the hash is actually existed here. And the corresponding password is basketball. Crack the hash using online tools. So we take this again and we use online tools. Online tools is one option to resort to to crack hashes. Online tools rely on rainbow tables. So there is a big probability that if you submit a hash, you might not be able to find it if it doesn't exist in the rainbow table of the tool. So here the corresponding hash is try hack me. Should you encrypt passwords? Nope. Why? Passwords should be hashed, not encrypted. So if you have a website that stores a database containing passwords, you should hash the passwords using a hashing algorithm like SHA uh, or Pcrypt or SHA 512 Crypt. These, these algorithms aren't vulnerable and they use salt, different salt for every password. Okay, recognizing password hashes. So, the questions here are three. The first one, how many rounds does SHA-512 crypt use by default? SHA-512 crypt is the algorithm used to hash Linux passwords. So, to find out how many rounds it uses to hash your password, we can find the answer here. So, this is a website. You can just use Google to find it. And here it lays down the answer. So upon reading these lines, you can see rounds for SHA 512 is 5000. You can specify the number of rounds as an option in the salt argument. We will start with 10,000 or 100,000 rounds. So by default, the SHA 512 crypt okay, uses 5000 rounds to hash your password. What is the Hashcat example hash for Citrix NetScaler hashes? You can go to the Hashcat website and find the answer. So basically here we have to find the hash for Citrix NetScaler hashes. If you go here to the page of Hashcat and search for Citrix, you will see an example for Citrix NetScaler is this hash. The answer right and it stops 17. Let me make sure the answer is correct. Citrus next scalar. Nope. Let's go up. Citrus net scalar. We have two. So this is the one. SHA1. Let me check. Yes. So the answer is the one for SHA1. Next one, how long is a Windows NTLM hash in characters? So again, we use Google to find the answer. So check the site, NTLM password hasher, and here you will see that starting this line, as NTLM hashes are uppercase 32 hex digits in length. In length. You can use this program to generate random 32 characters long hashes. So. The output hash length for NTLM algorithm is 32 characters in long, in length. Password cracking. So here you are given some 
password hashes, you will have to find out what is the hashing algorithm and then crack the hashes. So this is a practical scenario. Let's take the hash. As you can see, when you have two dollar signs, it means there is a salt. Okay. So here we have it starts with two. If you go to uh, recognizing password hashes, it is bcrypt in this table. But I'm going to tell you how to find out first the uh, hashing algorithm so we can use hashcat to find the password. So we open up the console here. Hash ID hash. Let me check on the tools. I remember there was a tool that checks on the type of the hash. Let me check password attacks. Hash identifier, yes. So clear hash. So you will put the hash. not found okay if you don't if you aren't able to find that with this tool you can use a tool called hash analyzer okay as you can see the hash type is bcrypt now we go to hashcat and use the found algorithm to find the or correct the password. So hashcat help. Here we have to determine the appropriate number for the hashing algorithm. Let's go to the help page and search for B crypt. Let's make the search from here. So bcrypt, which starts with dollar two, is blue uh, bcrypt bluefish for Linux systems, and the corresponding mode is three thousand two hundred. So the command will be first. What you have to do is to copy the hash. Okay, store the hash in a file and then issue the following command. I'm not going to run the command because it might take a lot of time. So I'm going to only show the command hash cat dash m. We specify the mode 3200 and then specify the file. In our case, it could be hash. The file hash contains your hash, which you copied from here. And then we specify the word list user share word lists. Q, and then you enter and you will find that the password is this one next one crack this hash let's take it and then go to the site ssa2256 so we can do the same Two, five, six. So here, use the same command, but change the mode to 1,400. So the same command is stands right here. Instead of 3,200, use 1,400. Or we can try our luck with an online tool like this one. Where was this? Okay. So with rainbow tables the password has been found which is halloween crack this hash as you can see here the salt starts with dollar six so let's take that and use hash analyzer the hash is not found Okay, let's use um, hash identifier.
auswählen, was fährt. So it starts with dollar six. Let's get back and check the table. So here it is SHA 512 crypt. Everything that starts with dollar six, the salt here is used by an algorithm called SHA 512 crypt. So back to Hashcat 512 crypt. The mode is 1800. Back to the same command, and you will find that the answer was or is spaceman. Board of this yet, crack this hash. Okay, let's first identify the hash. A good rule of thumb is to first identify the type of hash. So, by now you know that uh, the type of hash should be determined prior to the cracking process. Hash type MD5 or MD4. You can still here use MD5, find the corresponding modes, or you can copy that and use um, the tool, online tool. Fun for you. Okay, that's the answer. So the last task is hashing for integrity checking. And by now we have come to the conclusion that hashing is all about, you know, integrity checking. We want to check that the file is actually intact and has been corrupted after the download or after you have received the file from someone or if you want to compare different versions. So other than integrity checking, we use it as well for hashing passwords stored in online databases. So HMAC is one, a one, a one, a one hashing function used for authenticity and integrity verification. So the two questions down here. The first one is, what is the SHA1? Sum for the AMD64 Kali ISO. You don't need to download the uh, ISO image. Just click on the link and go to the link here. You will click on SHA1 sums and you will find that the answer is Let's check. It is 2019-4. Probably not here. Let's check on this one. So as you can see here is the answer. 2019 for AMD64.iso. Okay, what is the hashcat mode for HMAC SHA512? You can find the mode by going to the hashcat example page and search for this. So the mode is let's check. We have we have many results actually. Let's go up. So the first one is HMAC SHA 512 key equal dollar pass key equal salt. Is there any specification about this key equal dollar pass? So the answer will be 1750. So that was about hashing and crypto. I hope you find that hope, uh, helpful and informative and see you in the next video.